Anne's mic almost never. Okay, that already ceases. I, I can't cut out the uh, other mic also. I, I appreciate that. Okay. That's wrong too. I appreciate that. Dramatic improvement, so this is going to sound much better. All right. We're all seated. All right, Ted, let's go back. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Garcia Township Board of Trustees business meeting for October 8th. It is 7.30. Call meeting to order. Let's begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. all. That's it. Save that as a memento. Okay, once again, welcome to everyone here and those watching at home. Going to begin uh, tonight's meeting with uh, a presentation of our foreign exchange students. We introduced some at the last meeting. We have a few others, hopefully, to present this evening. Um, I'd like to invite the students and their sponsors to the podium, please. I'm this is your chance for a gross deal to see you, because we will see you from time to time. So if the sponsors would introduce yourselves and your, uh, and your, and your guest. There. Yep. My name is Dave Smith, and this is my exchange student from Germany, Sabine Schmucker. Hi. S Sabine, Hello. welcome to Gross Thank and you. Actually, why don't you... We have uh, letters for you. Mrs. Frucci has some letters. And we have some um, mementos. A little information on Grossi with a refrigerator magnet that uh, sent home to your parents and put a little dot showing exactly where you live. <laughs> and here's an official welcome letter. Dave, thanks. Hi. Maybe you'd like to just shake our hand. Oh, no. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And remember, whenever anybody asks you where you're staying, you go, this is Michigan. I have a great right there. It's a great training aid. Yes, ma'am. I'm Nicole Wozniak, and this is Sandra Slayman joining us from Lebanon. Hi. Sandra, welcome, welcome to Gross Hill Township. Uh, we're going to put you through the same introduction. <laughs> we, you have to be signed for Township Supervisor. Thank you. Welcome to Gross Hill. Little information. This is our treasurer, Mr. Van Oss. Hi, welcome. Here's I'm Deborah Blazak, and my Yuri Kato is from Japan. She's living with me as an exchange student. Hi, nice My Yuri, welcome to Gross Hill Township. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a who is who's been orphaned here? Oh, Jin Ray. We have a seat. In fact, you can come and work with us. <laughs> uh, Jin Ray, uh, why don't you just come with the microphone? She's from China, mm -hmm. and um, her host parents were having a meeting today that um, they couldn't come, mm -hmm. so I drove her down. And uh, I have to pay tribute to this young lady. Uh, she and my exchange student, Don, uh, Don Fun, uh, I said, would you like to work on a little project? And uh, they drove my, we drove my car over to the parkway uh, entranceway to Rosedale. Mm -hmm. The big planner where people have been complaining it's getting a little weak. Oh, did you put the chrysanthemums in there? Yes. They, no, and Jim Ray and Don Fung and I weeded 
pulled weeds about the size mm -hmm. of my wrist out, the three of us pulling, we uh, brought it down so it looks much more cared for, and we planted uh, uh, the mums, gave it a little color, and this young lady <laughs> was one of my helpers. So oh, cool. Well, on, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Parents going to get plenty of work on all of this. Thank you. I think it's pretty courageous for high school students to travel halfway around the world to just jump into a culture and take their chances. So I'm real proud of all of them. Thank you for coming to Gross Hill. Okay, that uh, concludes our uh, presentations this evening. Additions, deletions to the agenda. And this will be, I'm requesting an addition to the consent agenda, please, uh, that we add the resolution to proclaim uh, October 7th through October 13th as Mental Illness Awareness Week. For those of you who want to learn more about it, uh, they, have a do, uh, they do have a website, uh, nami.org. Um, questions, comments from the board about adding this to the consent agenda? Okay, with none offered, those in favor of adding the resolution to the consent agenda signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It will be so added. Uh, any other additions or deletions to the agenda? Okay, with none offered, I will entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. So moved. Moved by Treasurer Van Os. Support. Supported by Mr. Ranko. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. The agenda is thus approved. Consent agenda. I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda 12-089, which includes the approval of block party permit Coventry between Salisbury and Park Lane October 20th, the approval of the September 24th Board of Trustees meeting, the approval of check register dated October 5th, 2012, the approval of the National American Indian Heritage Month proclamation, and the resolution to proclaim Mental Illness Awareness Week. <coughs> Comments from the board? Mr. Frucci. Oh, I seconded. No, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, okay, with motion to second, with no comments. Those in favor of approving the consent agenda as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Consent agenda is thus approved. Um, I'm going to make one announcement before we go into action items for your planning purposes. After discussion from board members and uh, the less than satisfactory performance during the public commentary session, this is going to give you the opportunity. We have a three-minute rule. It's more time than we have to provide. It's uh, time recommended by the Michigan Townships Association. We have seen our more determined speakers cover a lot of territory, get their points across in three minutes. If you plan to speak during public comment, uh, I'm going to hold you to three minutes unless it's something incredibly value and the board wants to hear more. But uh, we're going to try to get the, we've got a lot of material to cover tonight, and I'd like to cover it in a business-like manner. So I'm with that knowledge, action items. I will introduce the first. I move that uh, Grosio Township approve the hours of 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Wednesday, October 31st, 2012, for the purpose of Halloween trick-or-treating in Gross Hill Township. Support. Seconded by Treasurer Van Os. History, purpose, and explanation. Every year we dedicate an official time uh, that the police, neighbors, will be looking out for the kids trick-or-treating. Uh, we're going to notice this out to motorists to be aware that this is the time on Gross Hill Township that the kids will be out, so be careful. Comments from the board? From the public president? All right, if not enough, are those in favor of appointing the hours of uh, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Wednesday, October 31st, 2012, for the purpose of Halloween trick-or-treating in Gross Hill Township? Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Not offered? Those hours are approved. Uh, I'd like to make uh, <clears throat> a motion to recommend the board to enter an agreement with Wayne County 
for priority winter maintenance services to the following local roads with the township and the county each sharing half the cost. That would be Bellevue Road, Meridian to East River, Church Road, East River to West River, Ferry Road, East River to West River, Gray's Drive, Meridian to East River, Horse Mill, Meridian to East River, Lions Drive, Macomb Street to Gray's Drive, Manchester Road, East River to Meridian, Meridian Road, Bridge, Bridge Road to Canal, Park Lane, Bridge Road to Church, Park Lane, Church Road to Oak Drive, Oak River Drive, Park Lane Ferry Road to Bellevue Road, and South Point Grow Road to Albemarle Road. Uh, the township was sharing the cost for the 2013 2012-2013 season to an amount of $10,500.16 for 10.81 miles of roadway at $490.66 $490 cents per mile lane that would include a to total of 21.40 lane miles. Okay, we have a motion, and I'll support it. Uh, the background on this, I'll let Mr. Van Oss cover more, but uh, basically the rates this year are based on the amount of plowing in the previous winter. Uh, gosh, the auto must be paying us for as much snow as we got last year. We won't be that lucky. Uh, other comments on the uh, well, performance? Well, <clears throat> traditionally, this is priority road service, and what that simply means is Wayne County is responsible for these roads anyway. By entering into this agreement, we're, we're assured of being first on the list. Uh, when the weather changes or when the snow falls, uh, Wayne County has a truck here immediately. Uh, we would be plowed, but it could be as late as the end of that day, depending on the amount of snow, or maybe even the next day. These are all primarily traveled roads. Uh, none of us agree with it completely. We feel that this is part of Wayne County's duties, but this is a responsibility for quality of life for the township. As you know, it gets in the mornings and the afternoons, especially with school buses, uh, this becomes a real priority to keep our roads clear. So that's why we've traditionally moved forward with this. We've seen this bill as high as $35,000. And we've seen this bill probably even more than that, I guess. And this is probably one of the lowest bills we've got, but we didn't have any snow to speak of last year. Hopefully we'll have a year similar to that. Comments from the board. Mrs. Frucci. Um, I'm looking at uh, the cost of 10500 but uh, up above it says we share half the cost, and last year it cost us 26000 total, but they given, they've given us a break because we're paying less than half. Uh, I don't have... Where do you have the 26000 Where does that come in? Uh, the cost for the... Oh, I, I see what you're saying. For the, for the season, right? <laughs> well... That's a share that they've delivered us at 10500 So, yes, it is a little bit less. Now, remember, we had almost no snow last winter. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's that's based on the snow of the previous winter, or how many times they had to plow the previous winter is what they bill us for this year. So these, these numbers that you see here, Pam, were for 2011, 2012. They're anticipating our share of the cost for 2000. That's what they charged us for 2011, 2012. This is what they're charging us for 2012, 2013. If you go down this list traditionally, you'll see a high of 2005, 2006 of thirty-eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So that's our total. That's our total share of it for this year. In next year, if we have a real severe winter, that number will go back up. Mm -hmm. We we kind of pay. It's an after-the-fact payment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Other comments, questions from the board. Comments, questions from the public present. All right, with none offered, those in favor of approving entering into the agreement with Wayne County for priority winter maintenance services, the following local roads as read, uh, with the township and county each sharing half the cost, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Not offered. The motion carries. Moving on to... Let's see, action item number three. 
Well, Miss O'Connor, welcome to the. Since your name is is on the action, would you please? Yes, thank you, and I do apologize. I I do believe Dale explained I was held up at my office. I would like to make a motion to approve the appointment of James Bintinger as Chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the recommendation of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the term length September 25, 2012 to March 31, 2013. Support. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. O'Connor and seconded by Treasurer Vanos. Um, some background, please. Well, I can uh, briefly read to you that um, our current township attorney, Mr. Assorti, was the previous chairman of the ZBA. When he was appointed township attorney, he resigned this position. Mr. Bintinger was the um, vice chairman at the time and has been chairing the meetings uh, since. The ZBA actually voted to recommend Mr. Bintinger at, as chairman at its August 28th, um, 2012 ZBA meeting and the minutes of the August 28, 2012 meeting were approved by the ZBA at our September 25, 2012 meeting. And um, with your approval, I think uh, we are still recruiting members of the ZBA, and uh, Mr. Bintinger and the ZBA have also uh, asked our um, township planner to actually make a presentation of each case uh, before the board and to the public um, at, at the meetings and uh, that was rolled out at our last meeting and it was very well received and it helped uh, everybody understand the issues involved in the case and spurred on for a good uh, discussion. So I, I strongly recommend that we do approve uh, Mr. Bintinger as chairman for the ZBA. Okay, thank you. Other discussion items, questions, comments from the board? All right, none offered. Those uh, from the public present, concerns with uh, or approval of Mr. Bittinger for the Zoning Board of Appeals? With none offered, uh, those in favor of approving the appointment of Mr. James Bittinger as Chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, for the term length of September 25th, 2012 to March 31st, 2013, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And action item number four, Mr. Kahn. Yeah, Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to make a motion that based upon a recommendation by the Gross Hill Airfield Commerce Park Manager, the Gross Hill Township Board hereby authorizes Michael Duker to sign contract number 2012-0647 AWOS renewal between the Michigan Department of Transportation and the Township of Gross Hill. Looking for support. Second. Okay, supported by Mrs. Fucci. And I'd like to invite Mr. Duker up here to go through the history and an explanation. The contract is quite long. If you have any questions, you can ask him. Okay. Hello, this is just for a uh, three-year renewal of our current agreement for its uh, automated weather observation system. It's a bunch of sensors and hardware that uh, puts together information for incoming and outgoing pilots on uh, weather that's currently there and it also helps predict future weather conditions at the airport and it um, broadcasts timely concerns that are going on at the airport such as snow depth or if we're having any issues on the runway just to ensure safety. And uh, it was approved at our last uh, commission meeting to pass along to you guys and the annual budget um, over the last three years has been $4,500 a year. Okay, this is an essential safety feature of the airport. Yes. It's a first-class airport. Also, the, the AWOS, mm -hmm. there, there are different terminologies for similar products. Uh, there's a local phone number. You can call it at any time and get the no fooling weather. you got to convert from uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit to have real temperature, but you can call that number and get the gross eel reading, which can be significantly different from the Detroit Metro reading where most of the uh, uh, TV stations get their official weather from. So that number is publicly available. You own it. So feel free to call it. It's a, I use it all the time. Other uh, comments, questions from the board? I just have a question. Mr. You said that this was approved by the commission? Yes. Our yeah, last meeting. Uh, did the airport advisory committee review and approve? Or did they it was, have nothing to do with this? It was run by, it was run by the head of the committee, but they didn't, they didn't run by or approve it. Other comments? 
All right, uh, comments, questions from the public present? Right. Yeah. All right, with none offered. Those in favor of um, authorizing Mr. Duker to sign contract number 2012-0647, the AWOS renewal between the Michigan Department of Transportation and Township of Gros Eel, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Duker. <coughs> Okay, the next one will be mine. Uh, I move that uh, based on the recommendation of the Downtown Development Authority to award the bid for concrete work, bid option number two, exposed aggregate concrete at the Macomb Lions Park to low better KM&M cement in the amount of $11,360. Second. Second. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kantz. Okay, the DDA acquired the property, uh, the history, purpose, and explanation. The DDA acquired the property at the corner of Macomb and Lyons for proposed pocket park in October 2009. The assistance of uh, DDA member Peter Stachel, the contract work bid specification was prepared, advertised, been received. KM&M cement was the low bidder. Uh, at the September 27, 2012 meeting, the DDA awarded KM&M cement the project for the low bid received. Work is anticipated to be completed uh, within October of 2012. Uh, some more background. The, we had two bids. They were widely divergent. We uh, further investigated, uh, interviewed both of the uh, bidders, and we're happy with uh, the, the bid that was awarded by KM&M. Uh, Mr. Sadlock was involved in it and ensuring that this was a a good, uh, these were good bids. So that the DDA opted to go with KM and M. We checked their work. I think we're going to be happy with it. Other comments, questions from uh, from the board? Well, I have uh, just a question. I'm curious, you know, because we we bring this up at any other um, time when we mm -hmm. discuss a, a recreational type facility. Did the DDA have any public input sessions or any kind of? Uh, um, you know, meetings in which they took public input for what the community would like for the park? And was there any opportunity for the residents in the vicinity to have their input? Well, the, the, all the DDA meetings are, are open meetings. We, gosh, this has been going on for two years now. Uh, did we specifically point out that we've revised the original plan, scaled it back? We'd like your new inputs. No, we, we did not specifically advertise it in that sense, although it was advertised as discussion of the Macomb Lions Park, which we will have a name naming event for someday, too. But it was that was the methodology used. Mrs. Frucci. Um, this is just for concrete. Is there going to be any planting or benches? And this is, this is just this is, well, we'd certainly like to do that, but with our budget constraints, obviously we're not getting the captures that we, the rosy projections gave us five years ago. Um, this is the start. I'm hoping the residents will be able to start using the park, then give us their inputs. I'd like to see a bench here. I'd like to see flower pots there, fountain, something. But we, we're, we're walking before we run on this. I, I wish we had the budget to do it all right the first time. We don't. So it's just pavement right now? It's, it's just pavement. Mm. Is, there, oh, is, it, is there a purpose for the pattern? Because it's, uh, it looks like a, um, it's like a big circle with two paths leading to it. Taylor, could you put it on the overhead <clears throat> so that we know what, everybody knows what we're talking about? Okay, so at the bottom of the uh, of the picture is the uh, Macomb Street entrance, and then Lyons, the between Macomb and the high school, would be on the uh, right side as you look at the screen. You can read the dimensions there. You would have a. It, it's going to do a paved circle, exposed aggregate, like some of the nicer driveways you see. And again, it's it's a start. It's meant as a starting point. So the fact that it's exposed aggregate. The fact that it's exposed aggregate, will that be enough to prevent kids from rollerblading and skateboarding on it? Will there be signage? Well, do we want to preclude people from roller skating or rollerblading? I guess we'll make those decisions. So there's no there's no policy yet for this. We don't have no policies or constraints yet. Okay. 
Mr. Kantz. Uh, th there's some existing trees on the lot. Can you? This was designed to to avoid removing any trees. Okay, thank you. At, at least at this point. Is there a focal point in the center, the circle in the center? That's open for creative ideas. <laughs> we did plan on leaving that for something. We're just not sure what that is yet. Mm. Mr. Van Oss. Generally, when we see a bid that comes through like this one did with a real low number, can you kind of give us or at least give me some insight as to what happened there? Okay, I'm going to try and go from memory if I can. I looked, there was two quotes I think that were, were received. Carol brought them down and gave them to me to take a look at. Do you have them? Give me one minute, please. Yeah, going to the first page, the the amount that the bids were. One of the one of the things I did question at the time um, is the the difference in the bids. Uh, no, no concern with that. One was about half of the other, and when I looked back through the uh, specification or the bids that came in from the contractors. Um, I had a little concern about, um, is, is an example, the concrete, the five inch thick concrete, and it just calls for six bag mix. Um, and I think I mentioned this to Carol at the time. My concern with six bag mix can be all over the place. Usually what happens is you put a, a test pressure amount in it, like 3,500 PSI or something, which the concrete has to test. And as I went through these quotes, they were just a little bit different from each other as far as the amounts. And I recommended at the time that they talk to both of these contractors, sit down with them and discuss with them what their actual proposal would include because they, they were so far apart. And then that's basically all I heard about it after that. Nice. Never, never came back to me. And I didn't have, they asked about the exposed aggregate. And I really have no experience with exposed aggregate concrete at all. Do we have some experience with K&M? Um, K&M uh, has been around a long time. I don't have any. We don't have any experience with them? I don't believe we do. Okay. I don't believe we Although, like I say, they have been around a long time. They seem to be a reputable contractor. They come into our department and get permits for driveways and stuff like that. So. Okay. Cool. All right. Thanks, Barry. Other comments, questions? Uh, I, was, I was curious, um, why only two bids? Was this, was it put out for open bidding or these only two, two that were uh, contacted? And, oh, I'm sorry, going from memory, we put it out through the normal bid channel. The newspaper. New, through the newspaper. But, you know, I'm a, little, I'm a little concerned that, uh, and I, I understand you're the uh, our liaison between the board and the uh, uh, DDA. I'm a little concerned that a member of the DDA isn't here to uh, give a bit of a presentation. Um, I'm, I'm really concerned that only that only two bids are are there, and the, the the great difference is the big difference is less you know less than half. One's less than half to the other. Uh, I'm always. Uh, Leery about that. It's uh, you know, that's, that's just too much money being left on the table, um, by one or the other, right? But um, I'd like I'd, I'd like to have a little better feeling as to how this is eventually going to turn out, and if we're going to put the concrete in, and it, I have no idea, I have no, um, I don't have any notions one way or the other as far as the design and, and the layout. But uh, to put the concrete in and not to do grading, screening, and, and planning uh, in the surrounding uh, the surrounding landscape, not so much bushes, shrubs, trees, focal points, but uh, it's still a relatively rough piece of ground. Uh, I'm a little concerned with that. I'd, if we're going to do it, I'd like to see it, you know, at least to the point where the uh, uh, again the uh, the ground was uh, graded, screened, planted, you know, be it. Uh, Hydro seeding, or, or you know, which is much less than sod. But I, I really wish that somebody from the DDA had been here to uh, give a bit of a presentation. Well, the plan was to, I mean, 
not planning on disturbing any more surface of the current lot any more than necessary. So right now, the only plan is to use the existing trees. Uh, there is no shrubbery in there. It's just grass and trees. And start a pathway among it. And then see what the residents want going from there. We did have, again, we had a, a, a grand plan. And when we put the bids out for the first, the phase one, the initial, uh, I think we were looking at $110,000, which we had available or close to budget wise, and the lowest bid came in at 180. And we knew we were, with the current draws we're getting the captures, we're, we're never going to get that project started. I, I can so, appreciate that. Yeah, so this was an attempt to get access to the park, get some use from the park, and then uh, let the residents, hopefully we can get donations and volunteers to do some of it. And with the future DDA captures, we can uh, make improvements that fit the desires of the community. So this was a start. I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not opposed to a start. I just... Your concerns on the, I was shocked at the difference in the prices too. Well, first we were shocked when we thought we were going to get some work done for 110,000. It came in 180. And then when we got these two bids so far apart, we stopped right then and said, we've got to peel this onion back. Uh, Mr. Verduce of DNF came in and uh, explained his situation. He thought KM&M's price was unrealistically low. Uh, Mr. Stachel interviewed both of them. Uh, we talked with uh, Mr. Sedlock again on, on his experiences and he knows more about concrete than I do. Um, and we still ended up with KM&M's uh, if, offer. If we approve this this, this evening, um, when is this, when is this concrete going to go in? I mean, we're, we're mid-October right now. That's why I'm asking. Uh, Mr. Raines and Mr. Stachel were on site today. Just you know, just doing doing a walk by, uh, looking at the site. I, again, I haven't heard from either of them as of today, so I don't know what uh, if any conclusions. But they would again. Your your point on the weather is well taken. If we're going to have this available for use, you know, throughout the winter, it's it has to be in a somewhat uh, timely fashion. Um, other members of the board, I've had, I've had conversations about Macomb and Lyons that uh, that that pocket park. Could I? I could see it as being a an absolute asset and well used uh, feature on Macomb Street to draw people uh, onto the onto Macomb, not only for because uh, I show up there every uh, every every morning at the Coney, a little little uh, advertisement for them, but uh, I watch the people walk up and down the street, and I I'm really uh, I'm really uh, totally in favor of that of the pocket park. I'm just a little disappointed that. There's not a representative here to explain the the you know the ultimate goal of it, and I'm really concerned about the the, the again the uh, the two different bids. That's just a lot of money to leave on the table, and when, when somebody leaves that much there, that means you're not getting. It, to me, it's always been you're not getting the the full service that you're paying for. And I'm, I'm just that's what I'm concerned about. I love the idea. I mean, I really do. I'm just concerned. About that great difference, and I'd like to. I know input from the from the citizens. Uh, I have my own personal input. I see people in that park every morning having coffee and donuts. Uh, I think it's a wonderful thing. But again, I'd like to see a, I'd like to see a representative, and I'm really concerned about the difference in price. So I'm not. That's my own personal Point, feelings. Points made, Ms. O'Connor. Well, at the risk of echoing uh, what Tom is saying, I guess my concern is putting down a pad of concrete before you've really got a vision for what you want the park to be. And while I think this is acceptable for any number of purposes, I think putting it down does limit future options for what you want the, what you want the park to be or what the community might want the park to be. So um, once, you put, once you put this down, uh, you're kind of limited by where you put the concrete, what else you're going to be able to do at the site. And so I think my disappointment is simply that we're putting down a concrete pad before we really have a vision and a community vision for what we want that park to be. I mean, we've, you know, we've heard Pam say things about um, a skate park. We've heard people talk about a splash fountain. We've had talk of a gazebo or of a farmer's market. I mean, there, 
are still so many different ideas available placing this pad down just to put a pad down will limit future use of the site okay thank you mr kind other comments from the board uh, just one. Mr. Kantz. Uh I have some experience with KM and M. They did put in my driveways about seven years ago, and they're still there, so that's, that's a good <laughs> sign. They put in my side driveway, my front driveway, and also redid my my garage floor. So, uh, and they were my lowest bidder at that time, also by a considerable amount. But they did do a good job. They were very quick. They come in, did the whole thing in one day, and like I say, the, the driveways are still there. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kantz. Mr. Ranka? Supervisor, just one question is that obviously there's a, a specific pattern here. Is this is this layout for this concrete part of a great, greater plan? It was the layout that disturbed the least of the existing park, the natural trees that are there, uh, a couple of fruit trees, which I think well, Tom goes by it every day. It's, it's, it's just a neat plot. So it was designed to disturb as little of the existing lot as possible, yet leave the opportunity for addenda to be put around it. So you have the circle, we can put benches around it, we can put flower pots in the middle, we could maybe, it'd be hard to get a fountain in the middle because we have to run plumbing to it. And I don't, fountains are kind of a pain, but it was it was an open option that, that led to improvements down the road and that was what the, the DDA decided upon. So the circle is 17.6 feet? No, that's 1,760 square feet. 1,760 square feet? Yeah, it's 50 feet in diameter. Okay. Yeah. With an 8 foot, actually 16 foot diameter circle in the middle, open circle in the middle. It's not that I can't read, but there's a lot of dots and spots on the, on the copy, so I wasn't sure if anything there was a... Mr. Van Oss. Uh, <clears throat> you stated that you had a master plan that was going to cost 180000 That was on the first plan we had for the park, the one we brought in Russell uh, Engineering. It was just for phase one of that master plan. It was, again, it was grandiose, uh, my term, based on what we thought we would have for captures for the DDA. Uh, we decided to make the $44,000 purchase of the LED lights because that added immediate value to the sure. community. That cut our our, uh, our checkbook way down. And then we did put out, again, a bid for the first phases to get some plumbing in, to get some access into the park. A um, couple of the minor improvements. Again, it was what we thought would come in at about 110000 and I'm just going from memory. The low bid was at 180, and it just knocked the wind out of our sails. Was this layout part? It of that? was. There was no. This was not part of it. Okay. We scaled that back. Just almost completely scrapped that. Some <laughs> some aspects of that original plan I'd love to see incorporated in a, you know in the future when the funding permits. But it was uh, it was breathtaking. That we we just we just don't have the the resources, Mrs. Frucci. Uh, what I like about it is that it has flowing lines. It's not just a straight uh, up and down square. Uh, it has a little flow to it, and uh, you mentioned it's a phase, and I see it as first phase of a project. And uh, I think it's a starting point, and, and I would go along with it because I, I think it would be nice to eventually have a full-blown park there, but I see this as a starting point. There's, there's, there's much. Go I mean, there are many ideas in the DDA, but very few dollars. Uh, while we're considering this, we're looking at a, a retail void analysis. Maybe some studied input on improving the retail opportunities on, on Macomb Street. There's just a lot of moving parts, and unfortunately, if uh, business were booming and people were lined up across the bridge to open businesses on Macomb Street the job would be you know, easier and more difficult because we'd have to find space for them. Space is not the problem. But uh, attracting foot traffic, um, impulse traffic to Macomb Street, is this is the one of the first steps. Could there be uh, money for a bench or two so that it could be a start of a park? There could be. We'd also like to have some generous benefactors who'd like to have a bench with their family name on it. We could certainly find places for them. Just throwing that out. Got other questions, comments from the board? Uh, Mr. <coughs> Supervisor? Mr. Kantz. I just want to say that uh, 
I have a lot of respect for the members of the DDA, and I think that the work that they've done on Macomb Streets, particularly the uh, park and gazebo at the corner of Macomb and Meridian, are excellent. So if this is their recommendation, if this is how they want to start with this park, I have no problem at all with going along with it. Good thank you, Mr. Katz. <coughs> Mr. Anka? Yeah, I've been thinking about this a long way, and I think I'm coming to the same conclusion that Peter has come to, and it's basically this is this is a project that the DDA has approved. It's really their money. These are business owners on the home, and it's tax dollars captured from their businesses that are going to fund this. Uh, although I would rather see a phase two of this project, I know that the, that the the grand plan was was much larger than this. I do think this is a, a good a good starting point. I would have rather seen the phase two, but again, this is recommended by the DDA. This is not a huge amount of money to uh, to get you know to get this park put to use until we can uh, figure you know the, what the right uh, you know what the right master plan and what the next phase two is going to be. Thank you, Mr. Anka. Mr. O'Connor. I just think it is important that we remember that the that the DDA members did work with a landscape architect and an engineer and a designer on the Macomb Common and that it actually had a plan, there was public input and there were phases so that every every step of the process was already laid out. We knew what we needed to raise money for. We knew um, what some of the public inputs were going to be in terms of benches, sculpture, trees, etc. So I, I, I think that it's great to say that they have a good vision. It would have been nice for them to share that vision before asking us to, you know, commit this money. Well, uh, just to, as a reminder, we had two grand visions for the Macomb Commons, and uh, gosh, we got, by rough estimation, about $800,000 invested in that acre. Uh, I, I really don't want to repeat, in fact, I will not repeat that on this part. Well, but the comparison was made, and yeah. so it's, I don't think it's a, a just comparison between a concrete pad and a park that had a oh, full the, scale. Yeah, the, the full, yeah, the improvements. Other questions, comments from the board? Mr. Malvesto. I will, uh, I will support this, but it's with reluctance and uh, reservation. I just, I, I would have liked to see, you know, a, a second phase or some planning uh, down the road as to where they would like to take this. But uh, I'm, I'm not opposed to it. I'll support it. But again, with reluctance and reservation. Other questions, comments from the board? Comments from the public present? Mr. Burkhart. Tom Burkhart, Albemarle Drive. I have numerous concerns to ask you. First of all, uh, I don't have any involvement with KM and M, but they're known to be a pretty good company. So I think from a contractor standpoint, I don't have any questions. Questions I have for you is, You've talked a lot about getting this in, but I don't hear that you know where any drainage is going to go. You don't know where any water is going to go if you want to put a fountain in. And how many times have we seen, not only in our community, that you put concrete down and you dig it up again because you've got to put a drain line in it or you've got to spend the money to, to uh, horizontally bore underneath something. What's the... Uh, you know, is this going to follow the topography of the land? What's it do to drainage? That's a good fair amount of... Uh, hard space put over top of it. Now when it rains, it's going to run off. Where does it drain to? How much does this make this, the adjacent land, swampy and unusable for weeks because the land from the runoff is there? What's your plan? You know, if you guys were standing there saying, this is the first step and here's our overall plan and this is step number one to get there and we know this is where the drainage is going to go and this is where the water is going to go and we're going to put trees here and plants over there and we're going to put some benches in, I think you'd have a good plan. But I'm not hearing that. I'm hearing we're going to put a piece of concrete down, and then we're going to figure out where we put the drainage in, and where do we put fountains in, and maybe where we put things in. And it concerns the dickens out of me that you don't have a plan for drainage, and we're going to end up digging something back up, or we're going to find out, boy, if we'd only put that 10 foot further east or 2 foot further west. So I hope you reconsider and table this and uh, get a more complete plan not that I want you to spend any more money. I just want you to put it back so that you know this is a piece of a bigger picture rather than a beginning without a picture. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Burkhart. Uh, we do know we have water and sewer along Macomb and some along. Do we have any along Lyons? 
I, I know I've looked at it, I just don't recall, but we did look that over and it was a consideration as we envision this center plot uh, as to the topographic drain. I mean, it's a fairly flat piece, the topographic drainage. I haven't seen elevation shots. Uh, Mr. Hadley. Jerry Hatley, 24128 Lions. Um, pretty familiar with this piece of property. I sold it to you. Uh, I brought the idea to Brian uh, several years ago. Um, my vision at the time was we needed a place for the high school students. I live right across from the high school in a duplex. I'm here for another issue later regarding the high school, but I think I can speak pretty well about the property. There were houses there at one time, so there's there's a sewage drainage, there's water. The property at this time drains fairly well, although I'm not an engineer. I cut the grass there for a long time, and there's no water issues that I'm aware of. But we did have, or at least my vision at the time was primarily for all the citizens, but mainly the high school students who desperately need a place to congregate after school instead of the drugstore or other spots that may think they're a nuisance. Um, the police come by, they're, they're out in the open, it's a great spot. So whatever you do with it, you do with it, but I would keep them in mind for outdoor classes. I see the high school many times during the day go to outdoor classes, place where they can maybe have a gazebo where they can get out of the rain. So there's many, many usage. And I'm kind of a guy that like to do things right. And I don't see a problem waiting another six months or a year or two years till you have funding to do it right. Uh, it's there. It's not going any place. It's been setting this long. Um, like to see it tomorrow. I'd like to see it done right. Um, I missed the first part of the conversation. I'm hoping you're talking aggregate concrete because the leaves are going to be falling and you can't put a, a regular concrete finish at this time of year. No way. Because the leaves will be all over. Aggregate, the leaves really don't seem to hurt it. It's going to be exposed to aggregate. That would be fine. But that's, that's my input on it. I agree with Tom. I'm not an engineer. I don't know exactly what the drainage is according to what is at the building department, but there is no problem with drainage there if you do go through with it. And um, I guess that's it. If anybody has any questions of me while I'm here and uh, was a property owner and know the property well, I'd be glad to answer any. Guess you're off the hook. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Hadley. <coughs> Mr. Van Oss. Uh, Barry, <coughs> scoop the podium a second. Does Macomb Street storm drain run on the north or, east, north or south side of Macomb Street? If my memory serves me correctly, the storm line that runs down Macomb is under the first lane in from the south side. From it's, the south it, side? It, yes. So in, in any event, we had an issue with drainage there? That's so. the one that I can recollect It's on Macomb Street. It's, it's under the first lane of traffic eastbound. And do we have a catch basin right there at Lyons? Don't know. Uh, no, no. There probably is at an intersection. There generally sure. is. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks. Okay. Some <clears throat> yeah, Mr. Shipper, I was right in your in your motion from the DDA. I do see that you the motion from the DDA was to authorize Peter Stachel to oversee the project along with oversight assistance from CE Rains. So that, uh, I'm taking notes on the back. So that that is correct. Is that part of it? That's not part of the bid. That's, that's not part of the bid. Uh, will will the, the DDA pay um, Rains to do that oversight, or will that come out of a, the general fund, or how will that come out? come out. If, if, if there is money to be sent to Rains, it will come out. It will be a DDA. It will be DDA funding. But right now, we have no uh, contract with Rains on this project. May I ask another question? You may. You may, Mr. Burkhart. Tom Burkhardt, Albemarle. The other question though, I was just thinking about is, where do we have money budgeted to maintain the facility? Snow removal, grass 
cutting or whatever else this may cause us to have an increase in cost. What's that cost and where is that? That's all, uh, that would all be funded through the Downtown Development Authority. Okay, they'll pay for it and that's in their budget? Yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. Mr. Clark, do you have a comment? Uh, Woody Clark, Park Lane. Where do they get their money? Uh, the Tax Increment Financing Authority, Downtown Development Authority, is a, a tax increment financing authority. 1992, I want to say, was the base year. Any improvements, increases in property taxes within the area, the buildings, the businesses, any increases from that time are captured and go into the DDA. It's uh, it's much like a, a, a brownfield. There are a couple other entities that work that way. It's an ability, and, and they're all over the place, uh, it's an ability to capture tax funds that otherwise would go to township schools in Wayne County. All these increments above that capture point go into the Downtown Development Authority for improvements to that specific area, which is primarily Macomb Street. Is it our money or Macomb Street's money that Pays well, for it's, it. ta it's it's a tax capture, so it's tax dollars. So how much cap tax capture is it from us versus Macomb Street? From you, unless you live on Macomb Street, it doesn't capture any of your tax money. And that's what I'm trying to get at. It's primarily the businesses and the residents on Macomb. On Macomb Street. only, yes. not outside of Macomb. No, just that what we the DDA is primarily the, the business district in Gross Hill. And their taxes. And the, go to their in, the increases in the taxes beyond the and I'm going from memory the nineteen ninety two level. Do we pay for any of it? No. Our taxes. No. no. The DDA pays for Macomb Street maintenance, the street lights, watering the flowers, snow plowing on the uh, sidewalks. It's all out of the funded out of the DDA. So we don't play power. We don't go. We don't plow the, the streets. I mean the, the sidewalks. We plow them, but it doesn't get. DDA pays for it. DDA pays for it. Yes. One question I could answer. I, Mr. Malvesto, I do have uh, probably two more questions. Um, I wasn't quite as clear with Mr. Burkhart, but when I asked about the grading and screening and, and planning, uh, that kind of that went along with the uh, uh, went along with the, or the drainage. Um, in talking to uh, one of the uh, businesses down at the airport, uh, who was looking at uh, possibly <coughs> leasing additional properties for outside storage, yeah, it was required of him to come up with a drainage plan. Yeah, it was really going to make it. Um, uh, not not financially uh, feasible for him to go ahead with it. And the last thing I hate, just like the uh, over at Park Lane School, when they put in that uh, that berm and created a drainage a drainage issue uh, at the sidewalk and back into the uh, the ball fields, I, would it be too much to ask to put this off for two weeks to get a uh, um, to get you know a uh, uh, what am I looking at here uh, some sort of uh, I understand your your point, and I realize that we're, we're coming at the end, you know, time, weather, that sort of thing. Yeah, I understand it's, that. It's time to do it right the first time. And I that's why I say with two weeks with two weeks hurt us just to get a uh, an elevation and a drainage um, report saying that we you know, we have to we have to raise this thing up six inches so that the drainage goes off equally in all directions. It's not going to pool uh, over the sidewalk on McComb yeah. or Lyons, creating additional hazards. Uh, so you could, is that unreasonable? You could add that to the motion to say that you could, um, we approve this bid and the construction pending the outcome of a drainage analysis. Or would it be, I mean, you, got, you have the newly revised table, the motion. Well, tabling um, holds you off for sure for two weeks mm -hmm. for a vote. If you amend the motion to make it a requirement, <coughs> Of the project, then you have per you you can gain permission to move forward once you meet those criteria. So you could actually start the drainage analysis tomorrow, and then move ahead with the project based on the outcome. Hey, if everything drains, I apologize. If everything drains to the center, then we have a uh, uh, a fifty foot diameter skating rink, <laughs> and I, I wouldn't want to see that happen. Right. So I would I would rather see uh, somebody say that. 
you know, by the elevations. This, this is the drainage. This is where it's going to go. This is the direction it's going to go. There's a catch basin. We can do this, that, and other thing. I'd rather, I'd rather see that than to only find out about it middle of the winter. We can't do anything about it. There's, there's a real, down at the, uh, the foot of Church Road and uh, uh, East River, uh, there's a drainage problem. Wayne County came in, worked on a drain there. Uh, they raised the elevation of the, of the drain, so now like that water collects right at the foot of Church Road and it's turned into a skating rink. I, w I don't want to see that happen here. I want to see it done right the first time. See, I, I think um, there is there is a willingness to move forward with this project. I don't think anybody here really opposes the project, but I think there's a hesitation because we see pitfalls, you know, coming ahead. And there's so many projects that we've done on the island over the years uh, where drainage became a concern after the fact. Um, and during, like when we did the... Um, the dog park, we had to you know, work on drainage afterwards. When we did this, the um, outdoor riding arena, I mean, that became a very serious drainage project. So, I, and we have plans for residents to actually you know, take advantage of a drainage plan, um, grant. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think what I'm hearing is concern that this is just um, maybe a little too hasty. Everyone likes the plan. But there's, there seems to be a concern that not enough uh, plan has gone forward to show us what to expect and to identify um, potential pitfalls. So maybe a tabling is good, or you change the um, you change the wording of the motion so that some of these things get addressed. You know, you you gain approval, but these things are addressed before the concrete goes in. I guess okay, we've got. And that's why we have the open discussion and debate because I'm learning a lot more about, we're all learning a lot more about how to do this right the first time. Um, actually, I'm tending towards tabling the whole project. Among the things we need answers to is more clear cut utility access, better knowledge of elevations and drains. Uh, I mean, Mr. Stachel may know that, but he hasn't included it in this package, and we need to know that as a board before we spend any taxpayers' money. Obviously, that's uh, well, going to be a concern. The money. We don't want them to waste it. No, it's still collectively our dollars, and we want to spend them properly. Um, so procedurally to table it, do we let the motion stand, but we uh, introduce a motion to table? No, boy. <clears throat> Probably easiest to vote it down and bring it back in another time. Yeah. That's... That would be uh, Mr. Wynn. The motion was made by yourself, supervisor, and seconded by Kantz. If you would like to rescind and Mr. Kantz would find that acceptable, you could do so. That may be the easiest like course of action. I, perhaps it's with withdraw. Okay. Um, with with what we've learned in the public, is that Mr. O'Connor, do you think that's... With that being said, uh, Supervisor and liaison of the DDA, I withdraw the motion. Mr. Kantz? Acceptable to me. The motion is withdrawn. I want to thank everyone for their comments. Again, my point is to do this right the first time. Well, and, and when you bring this back, uh, do invite the DDA yes. because I think they will take great pride in, in describing their vision, even if it's not... Uh, fully formed or expensive, you know, they will at least be able to tell us what it is that they envision happening. Okay, thank you. Um, again, for all your inputs, we want to do this right the first time, and uh, okay. there's no point in being hasty. All right, moving on. I'm losing track. Uh, action item number six. Again, this is uh, proposed that the Grosio. Township Board of Trustees approve a resolution to support the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in allowing hunting on the newly acquired Fish and Wildlife International Wildlife Ref Refuge properties via resolution. That's the motion. Second. Seconded by Mr. Ranka. The uh, proposed resolution, Grosio Township resolution regarding Sugar Island, um, yeah, Sugar and Calf Islands. Whereas Gross Hill is an island community with exceptional quality of life in part because of its exceptional natural resources, 
Whereas Bruce Hill and surrounding natural resources have been recognized for their biodiversity in the North American Waterfowl Management Plan, the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity, the Western Hemispheric Shorebird Reserve Network, and the Biodiversity Investment Area Program of Environment Canada and U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Whereas Grosse Hill is located within the boundaries of North America's only international wildlife refuge, the Detroit River International Wildlife Refuge, whereas Sugar and Calf Islands are part of a conservation crescent surrounding the southern end of Grosse Hill at the mouth of the Detroit River, and whereas Sugar and Calf Islands serve as important stopover habitat for migratory birds and the waters surrounding them, serve as important spawning and nursery habitat for fishes, whereas Sugar and Calf Islands are now owned by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and are part of the Detroit River International Wildlife Refuge, and whereas Sugar and Calf Islands are now protected in perpetuity for conservation and wildlife compatible public uses under federal law, and whereas the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has prepared a hunt plan for the refuge in partnership with the Michigan Department of Natural Resources, and whereas Gross Hill Township has historically passed a resolution supporting hunting on Stony and Celeron Islands owned by the Michigan Department of Natural Resources, and whereas in 2011 Ducks Unlimited designated the Lower Detroit River and Western Lake Erie as one of the top ten metropolitan areas for waterfowl hunting in the United States. Now, therefore, it is hereby resolved the Gross Hill Township Board limits, supports, and will permit hunting on and around Sugar and Calf Islands as allowed by federal and state law. That's the uh, motion. The uh, background, we had asked Dr. Hardig, apparently he couldn't be present this evening. He um, has another appointment and he will try to be here. Uh, if we stall? And, uh, no, no, I'd rather move this along. Dale, does your mic work? Right. No. Dr. Hardig had, had uh, would be here. He's got another appointment if time permits. He will be here, but we're on this. This is time to uh, move on this or not move on it. Um, the background is, gosh, those who attended the workshop uh, on the 25th, we discussed a, a number of items. The idea is to get, I'm going to paraphrase for Dr. Harding, the visitor services plan done as quickly as possible so that we can reopen primarily Sugar Island to the residents or the local, not just Gross Hill, but the local area, primarily the beaches, access for summer recreation. Part of that program, obviously be, uh, part, the, by federal law, the refuge remains closed until a visitor service plan is completed. Part of the visitor service plan is the environmental assessment. Part of the environmental assessment is allowing the primary purposes of the refuge and they are hunting, fishing, uh, educational, a few other things. There were like six primary, but those are the ones that came to mind. And uh, by Dr. Hardig's admission, for the township to resolve to support the Fish and Wildlife Service Drive to open hunting as one of their primary uses will accelerate the environmental access assessment plan and therefore accelerate the visitor service plan which will lead to the earliest opening as possible of Sugar Island. It's a mouthful, I know, but that's what I've gleaned from uh, working on this project with Dr. Harding since the inception. And we did, the township did, the, the identical thing when the Michigan DNR took over or bought Stony and Celeron Islands, the township passed a resolution allowing, well, waterfowl hunting per state law and we, this is a replication of that same uh, resolution on the federally owned lands. Comments, questions from the board? I, this I is a, a quick question. Uh, I, I just have a concern about Calf Island and, and fowl hunting on Calf Island simply because <clears throat> the channel between um, the southern part of Swan Island and, you know, the, the Boucher Canal opening is, Where is, I live. is rather close. And um, I guess I would have some concerns about stray, stray bullets and things like that in, in a location that's so very close to residences. Well, it's already, waterfowl hunting is already uh, legal. If you're not on the shore, if you're uh, there's some, if you're not exact actually touching the shore, waterfowl hunting, and you know I've been woken up by a few fusillades, but it's uh, I want to think, say it's from my house to Calf Island is 1,200 feet. It's farther than it seems. Um, shotgun shot just doesn't carry now. To Mr. 
uh, Shepherd's House at the very northern end of uh, Swan Island. Maybe a different story. I don't know. He's, I haven't heard any reports from him. But, you know, that, that possibility exists throughout the island. You, as long as you're not touching the shore and you're 450 feet is the uh, Michigan law for a shooting distance from an occupied building. That law doesn't change. Other, uh, so if that assuages some of your concerns. It doesn't, but if that's the law. Okay. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Fucci. Uh, safety was one of my concerns. Uh, that Grosio may be within the firing range, and uh, as Uda mentioned, stray bullets. And it just seems that both the islands are so close to shore. Um, is there. Um, Shimmer Island is, else is farther away than. Uh, is far Again, waterfowl hunting is already legal as long as you're not touching the shore. Mm -hmm. So you can hunt from a boat anchored, you know, ad adjacent to it and blaze away, I hate to use that term, but you can shoot honoring the 450 foot restriction from an occupied uh, dwelling. So it's it's already, I did, I did. Um, and my usual uh, so moments before sunrise wake up calls it sounds just like it. But it's already legal. This will offer the opportunity to hunt from the land up to the high water mark, or actually when, uh, when the visitor service plan is completed, it will open certain areas of Sugar Island. But right now, it is legal from the water adjacent to it. This will open it to setting up blinds on the land, arguably 10 feet further from where they're shooting right now. Well, I was at that hearing and uh, <clears throat> where Dr. Hardig said that they were going to try to speed up the process of making, <clears throat> hopefully, the beach available. And one of the comments that I heard and I echoed was um, that you can carry a gun to Sugar Island, but not a picnic basket. And I'm just hoping that the future will bring, uh, allow picnicking in the summer and use of the shoreline there and the beach, uh, as well as hunting, so that we have both opportunities. That, that comment wasn't exactly accurate, but if we do get the visitor service plan, uh, hopefully the way the residents who spoke, I think much of Sugar Island will be reopened, at least beach to beach area on the northern end. Looks like that will be open with some restrictions, but I, I think there's a real possibility. So, yeah, picnic baskets uh, all summer and then uh, 12 gauge in the fall. <laughs> Ms. Treasure. Uh, <clears throat> My big concern is this specifically refers to hunting. It doesn't limit it to waterfowl that I see. They say they have a hunt plan that's not included in our packet. Uh, it would be common sense to everybody on this board that you wouldn't want to take a rifle to that site and hunt varmints if there are any. But I would think that we would want that stipulated. I would be concerned if somebody went over there with a 22 to shoot, shoot squirrels and put a window out in somebody's residence on Gros Seal. I mean, that would concern me. With that not being stipulated and not having their, a copy or any information on their hunt plan and Mr. Hardig not here, I have a problem with this. I mean, if it's just going to be waterfowl and shotguns, then it should be stipulated. And it may be part of their hunt plan. I don't know. I, we don't, we're not privy to their hunt plan. They say they have one, but we're not privy to it as this board. And you're asking us to make a decision that basically says hunting. Well, hunting includes a lot of stuff, more than just shotguns. And I would be very concerned about that. <clears throat> Ted, uh, yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Rankin. Yeah, I understand Ted's concerns. Uh, however, the, the Department of Natural Resources regulates hunting on and around in the entire state of Michigan, county by county. What's allow what's allowable, what's not allowable. They regulate all of the species that can be shot, can't be shot, how it can be shot, what the, what the times are, what the you know what the the types of weapons that can and cannot be used are. So I think we leave that up to the state of Michigan to uh, to continue to define to the Department of Natural Resources. And, and I have no problem with this with this resolution as it is uh, as it's written. Okay. The, the reality is, this is under federal jurisdiction, and this is just a show of township support. They can allow or disallow at at, at 
the whim of the interior service. Yeah, so I think what's what's driving this is there is a resolution in Grosil that says you cannot hunt on Grosil property. The out islands, there's 14 out islands in total, are, are considered Grosil property. So this basically says that we're allowing that, you know, in despite of our overarching, um, yeah. um, you know, ordinance that says you can't hunt on Grosil shoreline. So that's why this would help them expedite their process. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Anka. Other comments? I just have one more. Uh, Chief Porzarelli, do you see any problem with this? What we do with the, in the police department is we go by the uh, DNR laws and the uh, obviously the federal laws for hunting. Now the question here is, are they asking for the township to give them the resolution to allow hunting on Gros Seal since Celeron and Stony right now the DNR are yeah the DNR are already um, our owners of that so. I guess the question would be, as Eric said, and I don't know enough about this, is the federal guidelines, do they have the same guidelines in Michigan? Each county has a different guideline for what they can hunt and what they use to hunt with, what type of firearm. So I'm not sure if the federal guidelines are... Oh, I'm sorry, reverse that. The state guidelines fall underneath the federal guidelines, and they just let the DNR set that up. I do know this to, to help you out on that. There isn't any um, hunting allowed that I know of um, in this area with rifles. Um, when they hunt deer, they, they hunt it. They can use, uh, I'm not sure, can they use slugs even south of Saginaw or Bay City? You can use slugs, but you can't use rifles. Okay, now that now that would be an issue if there's deer on sugar and you can hunt with a slug, that could be that could be an issue. So I'm not up on the federal laws on that, um, and the DNR already has their uh, setup for Celeron and Stony. So it may not be a bad idea to see what their what their hunting program is first and what they would allow. Uh, it, it's up to you. I don't see it. There isn't a problem with shotguns. It is further than you think. Shotguns drop after 100 yards. There's not much to them. Right. And it's they're not going to use uh, rifles out there, as you know of rifles. The other question is, somebody brought it, I think Supervisor Loftus uh, may have said it, um, or someone else on the board about the 22 hunting varmints or hunting, you know, small... Treasure. Okay. Um, Love that word varmint. Well, that's a question. If there is open hunting and there's an open hunting season, it would be on sugar, and it would be on calf too. Um, I mean, a twenty-two is like a two-two-three. It's an M, yep. just a shorter part of an M sixteen. Well, that's my concern. Going going into this thing, they have a hunt plan, and I'm sure their hunt plan probably, but we don't have privy to that, and we're being asked to vote on this policy, and I'm mm -hmm. concerned about voting on this policy without at least being comfortable with it. And I've never seen what the federal guidelines are for the area, because we haven't had any. There aren't any federal guidelines okay. anywhere for the federal us. guidelines are pretty much restricted to limits and seasons on migratory well, waterfowl, okay. primarily, they, you know, because there's treaty agreements with Canada and Mexico on mm -hmm. migratory waterfowl. That's kind of the limit of the federal intervention. The rest of the hunting laws are defined by the state, and you're right, in the southern, this southern tier of the state, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's shotgun hunting for deer, um, shotgun of a certain size, uh, shot size, which uh, I think it's, uh, I'm not, shot size for uh, for waterfowl. And I is small know. game the same thing then? For small game, I could say that they probably, 22 is probably, and, and don't compare a, a standard 22 long rifle with a 223 uh, 5.56 NATO round. They're dramatically different in their capabilities. The capabilities, but the, we're talking about distance, and yeah, that's what I would have Dramatically different in the distance they'll carry also. But a 22, it, it does have some reach. Yeah. About a mile. Well, and, you know, there's, there's talk, too, of uh, opening up a season for the swan, right, because they've become a nuisance in some areas. Oh. And I know you can you shoot... Canada geese. You can't shoot uh, enough of them if you. <laughs> I'm not a hunter, so you're asking me what we're not that's exposed to. Admitting that. I, yeah, I, no, I'm not a hounded. hunter, so 
chief or surrounding? We may be, but <laughs> I guess you're asking me the questions that uh, I simply can't answer for you. Chief. Um, but, I, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Tom. I believe that the uh, shotgun muzzleloader uh, law rule uh, in southern Michigan, basically from Clare to the south, uh, is only for, for deer. If you were shooting varmint or, you know, fur bear, be it coyotes, fox, that sort of thing, you were allowed to use a center fire rifle. I think Ted's right. We need, I, th I think we need to see a definition of what they're... Okay. Because... I certainly have no problem with that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, not, you know, it's, it's not that... If I, <laughs> if I go sit at the end of Sugar Island, and, and shoot coyote over at uh, Gibraltar Bay, let's say. I mean, I'm, 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 this is a stretch, okay? Uh, and I can use, I can legally use a rifle. That would be an issue. So I'd, li I'd like to see a definition uh, what their hunting, what their hunting plan is. Uh, if it's restricted to shotgun, birdshot only, um, that's that sort of thing. Because yeah. of the obvious reasons. But in Michigan, on the, from the, from clear down, if you want to shoot, let's say again, coyote. Uh, you know, any sort of varmints, that sort of thing, uh, you can use a center fire rifle. And I, if I'm I, wrong, I've got my tongue, but I've no, I am right. No, I don't have a problem with that. That's I have one other question. Does this, <clears throat> will this plan by, <clears throat> or this proposal as adopted, <clears throat> will this now allow hunting from the non-government owned islands on Grove Seal, such as Fox Island, Dynamite Island, which they hunt from now. No, that's within the township of Grove Seal, owned by a private individual. So no, you'd have to have a, I, I don't think they could get hunting on that. Or, well, or they'd they, have to. They already do. I mean, it, it's, it's not an issue. Well, they but, hunt there all the time. I'm talking but, legally but, then. <laughs> you can't. But the fact of the matter is, by doing this, do we now make that legal oh well that's no it doesn't no. make it just by proxy no it doesn't make it legal because any federally owned land will have to go through a federal or resolution to the federal government and state-owned land the state asked for a resolution when they um, purchased both of the other islands so these are all those other ones are private owned islands they are. Yes. so they are non-governmental owned but they're privately owned islands with is within the township of Grozeal by geographical border so the opinion would be no on that one, but, but the but we don't say. stop it anyway. So <coughs> well, well, realistically, it, no. Yeah, I mean it's. Yes, oh, no, it's you outside. build me a bridge, and maybe I'll go take a walk. But until <laughs> then, it's <laughs> not happening. All right. Bridges, no. All right. So, yeah, Mr. Treasurer, this this resolution specifically says to permit hunting on and around Sugar and Calf Islands. No, I, I agree with that. We have, we have we have we have similar ones in place already for. Um, for Celeron and Stony Islands, which are already owned by the Department of Natural Resources. Well, so again, my, my opinion is you let the, the experts on, on guns and hunting, which is the state of, and, and, and what types of hunting can be allowed, which is the you know, Department of Natural Resources in the state of Michigan, define that. Sure. We I simply think. allow the act of hunting on the island regulated by the state, by the De Department of Natural Resources. In the end of the day, really part of the reason why there are so many nuisance species, not only in this area but other areas, is because local governments try and usurp power from the state and federal government sure. by sure. stopping but hunting. I, I just wanted to point out the reasons why I'm not going to support this without seeing their hunt plan. That's all. <clears throat> other questions, comments from the board? Well, a little bit off, um, but we did have an opportunity to visit and tour the Humbug Marsh area with um, Dr. Hardig um, two Sundays ago. Our um, St. Philip's Lutheran and St. Thomas Lutheran churches of Gross Hill and Trenton had a combined youth event and we planted two trees uh, on the site. And just walking through the site, you know, um, it, it's interesting because my kids were little kids at the first spaghetti dinners and at the Gibraltar Bay hearing and they're in college now. This took a long time to make happen. Um, Tim was a part of the Seabees project to build the pathways and the, the, um, the pergola or the, the house there. To see what has happened there in the last 10 years is absolutely amazing. The sheer number of swallows, birds, deer prints that we saw, um, the eagle's nests, the hawks, 
So, you know, creating this environment to bring the birds back, and yet here we're, we're really focused on doing that so people can go out and shoot them. So I, the irony is not missed on me. Uh, I prefer to go hunting at 12 Oaks with my visa card. Um, but uh, this is something that does, you know, bring a lot to the community and clearly we're in a room full of hunters. So, you know, Pam, you and I better be careful. But um, I, I agree with Ted that if, if these are some things that are of concern, I mean, I don't know anything about, I wouldn't compare a gun to a, I don't know half of what that is. So I would think the experts need to lay that out. No, I, I think they have in the Michigan's hunting yeah, laws. Which is exactly why I support this resolution and let the state of Michigan do this through the Department of Natural Resources as they do today. Yeah, we have we have hunting on Celeron and uh, uh, Stony, and I have we heard any, I haven't heard any complaints. The, I remember we did have the complaints from the hunting off at the end of uh, Stout, but we took care of that. But the uh, the hunting that's allowed on uh, I mean the real full hunting on St Stony and Celeron, I just haven't heard any complaints, Chief. If you, they ju they're just the complaints aren't there. I, most hunters are pretty respectful and police each other. It's been just been my Would you be able to hunt deer on Calf Island and Sugar Island? Would you be able to, to, to do that? I mean, what I consider serious hunting. I mean, right now you get the permits to call the deer herd, but um, I think that would kind of surprise me if it if it went beyond waterfowl. I would assume it would be just regular open southern Michigan hunting season. Ms. Fucci. Is there uh, pressure to get this passed for a uh, timetable for the hunting season, or can we table it till we get a hunting plan? The hunting season, is the, this is just a resolution to support, I mean, it's already open. This hunting season is already open. The hunting on the island is already allowed because the new owner, the federal government, supersedes our ability to restrict. Mm -hmm. So this is just a resolution <coughs> showing the township supports the activities of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. But um, they're already doing it? It's, it's already, waterfowl hunting is already open. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'd like to add that archery deer is already also open. And deer archery season is already open. Other questions, comments from the board? Comments from the public present? Last chance. Okay. All right. With with none offered, then uh, I guess I'll ask for a roll call vote. Those in favor of the resolution as read to uh, support the hunting resolution of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Um, start with Mr. Kantz. Nay. Uh, Mr. Ranka. Aye. Ms. Frucci. Aye. Uh, Mr. Malvesto. Aye. Mr. Treasurer? Uh, for reasons stated, no. Uh, Ms. O'Connor? No. And Supervisor Loftus, aye. We have one, two, three, four. Motion carries seven to three. Four to three. Four to, I'm sorry. Yeah. Total of seven, four to three. Thanks, Chief. Uh, and that concludes our. I want to thank everybody for your inputs on that. Um, hopefully, I'll get all these notes to Mr. Harding. And. Uh, he can continue his work on the environmental assessment. And again, the uh, objective, at least from my perspective, and presumably the entire board, is to get the visitor service plan done as soon as possible and get Sugar Island back to the residents legally as soon as possible. Could you repeat the vote? Was it four to pass it or four? Four, four in support and three opposed. Huh. That will complete our action items. We'll move into the clerk's report. Madam Clerk. I'm still trying to still trying to see if there's any anything special about um, laying a motion to the table, but I think you can just bring it back at the next board meeting. Okay. And um, <clears throat> and take it from there with the additional information. Um, okay, so this is uh, leading up to the election. 
Um, the last day for new voters or new residents to register to vote in order to vote in the November 6th election is Tuesday, October 9th at 5 p.m. That's tomorrow at 5 p.m. Voted ballots must be returned to the clerk's office by 8 p.m. on election day. Our precincts are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. and are at the following locations. Precincts 1 and 2 are at the Grosiel Presbyterian Church on Horse Mill and Park Lane. Precincts 3 and 4 are at the VFW Post, Macomb Street across from the Post Office. And Precincts 5 and 6 are located at the Recreation Building at Centennial Farm on 3rd Street and Bellevue. Applications are still being accepted for new election inspectors and receiving board officials until the close of business on Thursday, October 11. Precinct inspectors must be 16 years of age or older, a resident of Wayne County, and a United States citizen. You can contact our, off our clerk's office for more information. We do pay um, in election inspectors $8, $8.50 an hour uh, for the day of the election. We do uh, take on part-time, so you could work um, from the morning shift until noon, or you can move work the afternoon shift until close. Um, I would like you to know uh, if you um, have have heard that the absentee, well, the ballot itself is four pages. It's two pieces of paper, and it's going to be a long ballot. Proposals, judges, lots and lots of questions. So we. The Wayne County Clerks Association, the Wayne County Clerk, we've all agreed that we will, um, in a sense, allow people to uh, access an absentee voter ballot if they're going to be working off the island on that day. Uh, they are technically out of town. Uh, the lines might be long, and if you get off work at 5 or 6, you may not get in line in time to vote. So we are encouraging people, if you think that you will not be in town or it would be very difficult for you to get back uh, in time to vote, to please apply for an absentee voter ballot. Uh, you can uh, take this ballot home. You can work on it, uh, take your time, and return it to the clerk's office by the end of the election day um, at 8 o'clock. If you are a college student and you are living away at college, if you... Um, have not voted before, you will have to present yourself in person at the clerk's office to request an absentee ballot. We will give it to you and you can take it to school. You can fill it out, you can mail it back, or you can actually give it to a parent to return for you. They will have to sign that they returned it. Um, I don't have Sharon here to stop me if I'm telling you something wrong, but I think I've done this enough times that I feel comfortable with that. Um, so if, if your kids are living away at school and they have no way, we've already been getting calls even at home, uh, people trying to figure out how can I get my kid a ballot. So it's very important that you plan ahead. Uh, you still have some time uh, to either pick up your kid or have them make the application and we can mail them the ballot and they, you, know, you find a way to get it to them. We can mail it to your home and then you deliver it to them. Uh, there are a number of ways that, that you can do that, but we cannot give you their ballot. So you just have to remember that's part of the timing. And so we did place an ad in the EO camera to that effect. And um, I did want, uh, Sharon gave me a note here that in case anyone does ask what alternative documentation ID is acceptable in lieu of a Michigan driver's license, or a Michigan ID card. These are the following. A driver's license or personal ID issued by another state, which makes it kind of tough to vote here <laughs> if your ID is from another state. Um, federal or state government issued photo identification, a U.S. passport or U.S. passport card, military photo ID card, student ID with photo from your high school or an accredited college or university, and a tribal identification card with photo. So um, 
And if you have any questions regarding that, I mean, it's still a month out, you can give us a call and uh, we will give you the best advice that we possibly can. So I think that's it for the clerk's report. Did you want to show them just, I can't emphasize enough, this is a big ballot. And we've had them before. <laughs> here, this is, and these are the backsides, and every one of them affects your future and your wallet. Yeah. Now, so there's something on every side for everybody. What What is um, with this ballot, though, unlike the uh, primary ballot, is that you can vote across parties, and you do not have to fill in every oval. If there are contests where you do not wish to make a vote, you can leave a vote, uh, an oval blank. Um, you can cross uh, party lines. You can also vote a straight party ballot. So some people do that. It makes it easy. You circle one oval and it automatically ticks off everybody in that um, category. Um, traditionally, we talk about voter fall off. People usually vote the first page of the ballot. They'll vote president and state reps. By the time they get to the end of the ballot, you know, we may have issued 8,000 ballots and that last little item on page four might get 50 votes. So um, people do tend to stop um, along the way. So make sure before you go in that you have an idea of what you want to vote for. But also be patient for the people who come in and make up their mind right there. Uh, that is their right as well. Um, the undecideds. The undecideds. Um, our election AV counting board will be meeting here in Township Hall. Uh, they will be very hardworking. I think Sharon has asked them to come at 8 a.m. because we have an absolutely enormous number of absentee votes um, and requests for absentee ballots. So this is going to be um, a long day for, for that team. But again, uh, they're motivated. They love what they do. They do it in the name of uh, democracy. And um, there's always a good spirit. So again, come out and vote. Thank you, uh, Ms. Fucci. Luda, is there uh, available that uh, citizens group that evaluates and says qualified or well qualified for like the judges, the ones that you really don't know their background? There used to be a pamphlet you could pick up. For a Traditionally, the League of Women Voters will publish something, but as far as I know, we don't have anything on hand. Uh, I believe, though, in this age of the internet, um, you could look up those different groups. I know. Just about every interest group will tell you who to vote for and who not to vote for. Um, but I think that's something that you might have to, to look for. All right. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Treasurer. Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, just to comment on that, uh, those people that are choose to go to the polls, like myself, it would behoove you to come to Township Hall and either review a sample ballot or pick up a sample ballot so that when you get there, you're not going to be two hours in the voting booth. It's huge. And those, those samples are available for your review. You can review them there. You can take them home. And it would not be a bad idea to do that. I've been looking at it for the last two weeks, and I'm still not totally confident in what I'm looking at because there are a lot of issues and a lot of wording that you need to wade through. There's a couple of issues that affect the township directly. Uh, there's a couple of county issues that are pretty strong that you need to look at because it's going to affect your tax base. Uh, I will be doing a <clears throat> program on TV with the millage issues that are uh, going to affect us directly with Gross Hill Township. Uh, that will be aired. I'll probably get that done next week and that will be aired just trying to explain what's on the ballot, especially on the proposals for the township. Ted, could I just uh, also say you can bring the sample ballots with you into the voting booth, but you can't be flashing them when you're standing in line. You know how the rule is you can't wear your politics on your sleeve um, when you're waiting in line. So, you know, we just ask you to fold it up and bring it out when you get into the, into the voting booth. 
All right. Thanks. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. We're still accepting winter tax. I'm sorry, summer tax payments. <coughs> uh, they are now delinquent and have to be paid at the township hall. Uh, we're into October, so now there's a 2% penalty. November, that'll go to 3% and so on until we turn it over to Wayne County. But they, the banks will not accept the payments now because they're considered as late payments. Uh, township currently has $13,771,104.73 invested. There's a complete investment report to see where it's invested. That's all the funds that we have. Uh, not all of the distributions have been made yet, so there are still some distributions that have to be made to county and schools. Uh, and I believe we have a DPS meeting tomorrow at 7.30. Uh, we're going to be discussing some issues on water. Water rates, I attended a seminar <clears throat> or a meeting the other day with Detroit Water System with Mr. Sedlock and the chair of our DPS commission. And we got to <clears throat> review some of the problems that are facing the Detroit water system and its new director, who I might, just as a comment to public, she seems to be really, really sharp at what she does. She's picked on a monumental task. They must be paying her a lot of money. I can't imagine why anybody would want to do that. Uh, <clears throat> she has a lot of the right ideas uh, to try to get these rate issues under control. Uh, however, she's dealing with a debt issue, a current debt issue with the Detroit water system of $6 billion, which constitutes somewhere in the vicinity of 55% of her total budget. So, I mean, her whole payroll is only 15% of their budget, and it's huge. So any effect that she has will have to address a $6 billion, that's with a B, folks, if you didn't hear me, and an infrastructure that's 100 years old and probably is going to require several billion dollars to bring up to standard. So we have a huge issue with this Detroit water system. Is it the best game in town? We're reviewing that right now. Uh, and before we make any decisions to move forward with our own water plant or a joint water plant or another community's water system, uh, that will all be under review. But uh, I commend the system for hiring this woman because she seems to be really sharp and knows what she's doing. Uh, we now have to determine whether that's the best game in town. And I have nothing else. Thank you, uh, Mr. Treasurer. Uh, trustee reports. Uh, Mr. Modesto. First off, I'd like to uh, thank uh, the Volunteer Fire Department, Chief Murdoch, and the, and the guys. They put on an open house on, fr on Sunday, excuse me, Sunday, and based on the uh, smiles outlined with ketchup, mustard, and frosting, the kids seemed to have a great time. Uh, they were running around. Uh, there was a lot of activities. A few of them actually found the, uh, uh, the line that uh, you know, blew, the, blew the horn, and, uh, of course, they rang the bell. But... Uh, yeah, Duncan and his uh, and his department put on a, an absolutely great uh, open house. They would be applauded for it. They did a very good job, and it was well attended. Um, I can't say any more. Thanks, Chief. It was great. That that's it. It was a good time. All right, Mr. Rankin. Uh, Chief, can sure. Chief Murdoch. I just wanted to comment on Friday and Saturday, the Riverview Fire Department had lost one of their members, and Grozio Fire Department stepped up with their membership and housed their station uh, Friday night and all day Saturday, and also covered calls here on Grozio at the same time. So I commend the, the membership on Grozio for taking care of two communities during the course of day and a half. Good job. Thanks, Chief, and thanks to the guys. Mr. Rankin. Sure. Um, there's a bicycle pedestrian commission meeting next Tuesday, the 16th of October. Um, we have been getting a few letters in to the bicycle and pedestrian commission regarding uh, bike path issues. So keep the letters coming in. It's great to see uh, to see people uh, so excited about the commission. Um, the planning commission had a meeting on October 1st, and there's a, there are two vacancies. Although we do have one applicant for a vacancy that I expect uh, will be uh, uh, the subject of a a. a um, uh, our next meeting, hopefully we'll have a, an applicant uh, to get approved at our next meeting here at the township. 
And then there's a police commission meeting tomorrow on the, uh, it's tomorrow the 9th of October. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rankin. Mr. Kantz. Uh, two weeks from tonight, on Monday, October 22nd, at 5.30 p.m., we'll have the grand opening for the waterfront park at the east end of Gross Hill Parkway. Everybody's invited, so come on down. Dale and I are going to supply donuts and cider, right? Hey, that time of year. So come on down. If you, if you worked on the park, you know, come on down and take a look at it. If you donated to the stairway, come on down and take a look at it. The plaques for the donors of the of the stairway are, are on the stairway now. Dale and I are going to finish up a few little details here in the next couple of days, uh, but the park will be open for the public starting uh, October 22nd. Is that the opening day? The grand opening day is October 22nd, 5.30 p.m. That's it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kanz. Mr. Frucci. Uh, I, I did mention the planter got um, weeded and um, <clears throat> dressed up by um, two of the Chinese exchange students, and uh, DTE Energy had supplied the, the money to do the planter, and they planted it with native uh, plants, which was a nice idea, but uh, the caretaker was missing. and. Um, Hannah Hughes, who is a master gardener, she and I went up there last week, and uh, she said, just cut back the overgrowth and plant some flowers, and it'll look a lot nicer. So um, Kroger's was good enough to give me several plants of uh, mums, and so I thanked them, and uh, the three of us went over there and deadheaded and uh, pulled out giant weeds, and um, I think it looks a lot nicer now. And for a, a, some time, there were a lot of just little signage stuck in the ground, uh, kind of taking away the entrance to Gross Hill, and I see those have been removed. Um, I don't know whether that's Wayne County, Trenton property, or... I, I know we don't own it, Somebody's so. been uh, addressing that over signage there. Wayne County, right? And uh, our Entryway Improvement Committee is going to meet tomorrow, and um, we're going to start work on the toll bridge entranceway to try to dress that up. Uh, the Communications Commission uh, does have an opening. I questioned it at the last meeting, and what we don't have is the school liaison, uh, because the, the lady who would have been on the commission uh, is not an island resident. And so there would be an opening, and I understand Mrs. O'Connor is interested in joining the commission. <laughs> so uh, there is an opening, and um, uh, we're going to meet on Wednesday. The Beautification Committee, maybe you've noticed the northeast corner looks like it's waiting for planting, and uh, we're working on getting a nice layer of topsoil there. We killed the weeds, and um, uh, we're hoping the trees are, are on order at, um, uh, and they will be, we hope we'll plan and get that corner dressed up uh, before fall is over. <coughs> Dump the Junk is uh, this coming Saturday and Sunday uh, from 9 to 4. And uh, it's not only bring large pieces of, of junk that you don't want to put out by the roadside, but if you've got something that has some uh, utility still left in it and uh, don't want it around the house, bring it because they usually get picked up by somebody who has found a treasure. So it's dump the junk <coughs> slash find a treasure. And uh, I attended the Downtown Development Authority meeting uh, last Thursday, and um, I shared with them my concern as you drive down McComb Street and so many empty stores. And um, one of the, uh, they were almost all businessmen and women involved on the DDA, including Brian. And um, uh, one of the, uh, 
members of the commissions or the DDA said that she felt one of the problems was um, high rental. And so I think uh, we have to work with the landlords to make sure that the rental property is uh, within reason. And um, I shared with the DDA that maybe um, they could come up with some sort of program to promote business and fill some of those empty shops. And it would be great because it would also increase your uh, uh, tax from the businesses if we have them all occupied. So hopefully there's somebody out there. I understand there's a bookstore um, couple that wants to open a bookstore. And I think that would be a good addition. And that's we, all I had. We'd love to have them. Uh, hopefully they can find the right property. Mr. Mr. Van Ross. Uh, I, I remiss. I failed to mention that the DPS Commission has lost one of its members. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Frank Kent passed away. I attended his funeral on Saturday. He was a 10-year veteran of the DPS Commission. He will be greatly missed. Uh, <clears throat> really a hands-on guy. Never said a lot, but when he did say something, he listened because it usually had some merit. Uh, we have that spot tentatively filled. Uh, we will have a couple more spots available at the next election because two of my uh, <clears throat> DPS members were elected to office. So get a pretty good track record on a DPS for people coming from there to here, which is a good thing. Now let's, uh, let's take a moment of silence for, for Mr. Kent, just a great guy, great community contributor. Let's uh, just take a moment of silence. And Frank, th Frank, thanks for everything. You are missed already. Well, I haven't been as busy uh, the last two weeks as, as usual. Uh, let's see, just a couple odds and ends to cover. The uh, Educational Foundation, Grossdale Educational Foundation, ninth Annual Pig Roast. It really is a good time. Set for Saturday, October 20th, 6 p.m. at Centennial Farm. Tickets, $40 per person uh, now after October 13th. They're going up to $45. They're available at all the schools or online at www. GI Educational Foundation, all spelled out, dot org. Um, again, it, it's a good time and a lot of opportunities to spend money to support the schools. Uh, let's see, Wayne County DPS is sponsoring another household hazardous waste collection Saturday, October 13th from 8 to 2 at the Southland Shopping Center. There are flyers in the back of the room for that. Uh, let's see, other recreational department. Fall ha Harvest Day this coming Saturday, October 13th from 10 to 3. This is a great time for the kids. Uh, admission, $8 per person. A uh, good deal for seniors, 55 plus. That's a deal. $3, children under 3. Um, petting farm, animal shows, pony rides, hay rides, children's crafts, face painting, balloon art. The animal shelter has additional activities going on uh, to raise funds for tails. Last, my closing comment, uh, this is on top of the other awareness months, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's, uh, gosh, I think one in three is the latest. Women will face it at some level of severity. The uh, government sources are saying you don't need to be checked until you're 50 and then maybe every five years after that. But those who follow it more closely are seeing age 40 earlier if it's in your immediate family age 40 and every year. Um, got, of course, personal experience in that. Uh, take it very seriously. And when you see the pink ties and the pink gloves on the football players, let's take it seriously, please. And that uh, concludes my supervisor's update. Uh, Mr. Riem, Township Manager. No reports. Okay, that allows us to step into public comments under the new improved enforced old rules. Introduce yourself. Um, three minutes. If, uh, if it isn't clean, if it isn't honest, I'll stop you. And Mr. Hatley raised his hand first. Mr. Hatley. Well, I'd like to thank you, Brian, and the Board of Trustees for this opportunity to, to speak on a subject that I consider to be very, very serious. 
Uh, Jerry Hatley, 24128 Lions. Uh, my house is right across the street from the high school. It's the duplex if anybody goes by there. My wife and I moved in last October. My background, I, I, I went all through steps of supervision from foreman to president of a company. And I'm very, very uh, aware of safe environments. And our high school is everything but safe for our children's safe passage to school. Over the past eight months, I have spoke to just about every department in the city of Girls or township of Girls Hill, from the police department to the township offices to the building department or uh, DPS. And fortunately for us, there was a bus accident Friday. And it's a blessing to this community. Uh, vehicle traveling east on Gray's Avenue. I know the bus driver. This nice lady, been a bus driver for a long time. She came out of the, the turnaround park lot where the buses are and failed to yield for a coming car and it hit her broadside. Now, I knew this was going to happen and try to get the folks here to listen with no prevail. Now, lucky for us, this opportunity is here and we need to take advantage of it. That could have just as easily been a 16-year-old student with five kids in their car with the radio turned up blasting, texting, and speeding and swerved to miss that bus and go across the street over the curb and kill some kids. This was going to happen. Apparently since Friday there's been a change with some of the people that they're willing to talk about it now. I'd like to mention some suggestions. There needs to be a three-way, four-way stop sign at Lyons and Grace. Not a yield sign coming out of that parking lot. I watched the buses. They line up and they take a California stop. Not not reckless, but they come out of there like a freight train, one after another. They certainly can't have a vision of everything going around them. And when a bus stops on Macomb Street, you stop. That that sidewalk and that piece of property there is very active with children walking through that whole thing. They're they're crosswalking, they're all over the place. It's absolute chaos. Gray's Drive. And by the way, I'm, I mentioned these suggestions to be a matter of a record. Because I have talked for about eight months. Now it's time to get it on record. Because if you think that bridge fiasco cost us some money, you let one of them kids get a paraplegic, and we'll never finish paying for it. It'll be like our debt. Anyways, here's some suggestions. There's not even a slow school sign. Please. I'm sorry. Time wise, okay. There's not even a slow school sign. I can come back and do this three or four times if I don't have time to talk about our children. It's not a problem. You want to throw me out? Oh, we'll come back in another week. The slow school sign should be implemented. There's no signs that says school's in session, and then the police should enforce it and rate tickets and people will slow down. There's off the, the stop signs are on Park Lane and East River Road. And I'm telling you, they come through there like a bat out of hell. Um, there should be no parking on the north side of Gray's Avenue. So during football games and whatnot, from the, the, the football field to the street is clear vision for cars so people don't run out between cars. Parking on the south side of Gray's would be a better idea. Again, okay, bus. Gonna, gonna, gonna move you along? I'll come back. Let me know. Okay. But write those down. Write them down and then get them to it. No, I'll come back for three, four weeks. Maybe somebody will get two killed. Weeks. Well, two weeks. Maybe somebody will get killed before then. But give us the list and we'll, we'll start working on it. Chief, uh, did you want to? Yeah, I want to. I just had some good answers. I'm well, Mr. Hanley. Um, with all due respect, 
we've often listened to um, some residents berate us for up to 20 minutes, and I would be more than happy to hear what Mr. Hatley has. Yeah, it's kind of early in the evening. We have more time. Thank you. Um, this accident happened would not have happened if there would have been a stop sign there. It wouldn't have happened. Okay. Um, anyways, I hear him talking about a yield sign coming out of for the buses. That needs to be stopped. The officers that came said that it's a state law. You stop coming out of the parking lot. Well, why would you put a yield sign there if it's a state law? To, you have to stop. That don't make any sense. Um, another item is uh, the snow removal. They, they plow Macomb Street sidewalks, but they don't do lions. And there's a lot of kids that walk back and forth to school now in lions, and they're walking out in the street when the snow gets high, and there's cars and kids in the street, and it wouldn't be any problem for the snow removal guy to, to make a pass on lions. Um, during... Uh, the football game, the homecoming game, dark, raining. People were parking over in Fifth Third parking lot like they always do. Graduation is the same thing. You should have seen these parents trying to get across that street with them cars coming up and down grays. It's unbelievable. Um suggestion is there was two officers that, that I talked to at that accident. One officer said that you don't need a stop sign there. It's unnecessary. It'll back up traffic. And I gave him a scenario about the bus and, and uh, the, the, the people with the radio on and texting and going across the street and killing some kids. I said, are you going to tell that mother we don't need stop signs there? He said, yeah, I'll tell her. Then the other officer uh, seemed to be concerned and, and took action, and I heard from him today that they're, they're going to really look into the situation. There's been a them and us attitude, I think, in a lot of the departments there. Not apples for apples, but the fire department is at the top of the list. They're good people. But it seems like with some of our officers, it's like we don't need your suggestion. I'm sorry. I stand up here and will get criticized for it, but it's true. Same thing with some of the administrators of this township. And I suggest that uh, maybe we take a week or so and put a plain clothes person on my front porch and watch the morning traffic and the, the afternoon traffic when the kids get out and the football traffic and really see what's going on there because this is our children's lives. Now, I live there. I think I'm an authority on the subject. And I think the people out in the community watching TV tonight, if you know any public official, you should get a hold of them and tell them we want safe streets for our kids to go to school. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hadley. Chief? I think that this may uh, help out Mr. Hatley also. Um, We've already started the first phase. Mr. Ice sent me the letter. Um, our traffic sergeant and uh, myself have been talking with individuals at the school. What we are going to do is we're going to implement a program. We're uh, taking all the uh, engineering issues. Without going too far into it, it's, I could talk a half hour on the engineering issues, what's correct and what's not for areas. Um, the first step already, uh, Mr. Ice again sent me a letter. I can email that to you tomorrow if you like it. What they're going to do is start directional traffic coming out of the parking lot. And uh, Mr. Hatley is correct. When you come out of a private drive, you must stop um, before entering onto the roadway. So the bottom line here is we're going to do it in um, phases, not all at once, because sometimes when you put too many changes in the engineering end of a roadway, a street, intersection, you're transferring the problem to another area. It's just like the, the issue with the red light when they wanted to, that engineering firm wanted to put the red light uh, at the ramp that we have here closer to the bridge. And we told them you can't really do that because that will just transfer the kind of accidents that we have. It'll go from the so-called, uh, you know, the T-bone accidents to the rear end accidents on the bridge. And that's why the light was moved down to uh, uh, Blavelt there. 
or chicory, I'm sorry. So the, the bottom line here is the first phase is already, and actually, let me just send that to you tomorrow so you see. Um, he sent it to me this afternoon. They will start to implement that. Um, we will see how traffic flows from there. There are many reasons why you don't put in a uh, triple stop sign at an open T intersection. Again, it's an engineering issue. So um, just to let you know, though, I mean, there are people listening. Um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I absolutely believe what he's saying when he spoke to other individuals. I just, I'm not sure about the communication issue, but I just know that we have been working on this, and it's already um, put in place for the first phase. We're going to do one phase at a time. It only makes sense that way. Too many phases at once to put in there may um, give us an adverse reaction that we want from the drivers, from the people coming out of the school. So just so you... Question for Chief. Uh, what's for Chief? the uh, speed of uh, people exiting after school? Has that been a problem? Uh, the people coming out of the parking lot, our number one radar area on Grozeal for special attention checks is Gray's Drive. And um, I must say, every new school year, we have a new crop of 16-year-olds, and we try to keep them honest. And uh, we are there more than any other uh, street, definitely, for stationary radar on Grozeal. So yeah, do we have a problem there? I mean, we have issues at any school, or any high school will have an issue, but... When they see the marked police cars out there, it uh, kind of keeps them on us. But Mr. Hatley's right. When you have football games, when you have special events, you have twice the amount of people that we have parking for. So they're parking. We allow them to park on one side of the road on Grays. He mentioned that area. We allow them um, to park in uh, certain no-parking areas. And then, of course, some of the private lots let them, like the bank lot, they don't mind if they park there at night. Um, it doesn't interfere with their business during the day. So... Um, a lot of valid points, but um, we are working on them. And uh, anyway, I'd just like to send that to you just so you see that it, the process has started already from Mr. Ice sending me that what his first uh, um, phase will be to this issue. Okay, I'll be looking for it. Thanks, Chief. Okay. All right, other comments? Uh, I'm gonna, uh, Mr. Bletcher. I say not doctor this time. Thank you. <clears throat> Carl Bletcher, 8250 Ferry Road. I'd like to follow up on Mr. Hatley's uh, comments as well as uh, Chief Porcerelli with two quick matters. Um, number one, the uh, issue is safety. Safety requires that we have people available to respond to problems within the community to be able to patrol. Mr. Hatley's talking about putting a um, plain closed person on his property. There are a number of different things we can do. The problem is that ultimately it gets down to a question of resources. That is a segue for something I want to bring to the community's attention, and that is that we have a millage that appears on the fourth page of the ballot, right-hand side, right above the Wayne County Community College millage request, and near the very end of the ballot. The community will have received a color brochure that was mailed out approximately a week and a half ago. I encourage everyone, if you have read it, to consider it very carefully. It is informational. If you have not read it, please take the time. That brochure asks and answers a lot of questions about what the police department does and why there is a millage request for one additional mill that's appearing on the November ballot. The second thing is, is that there's going to be an informational program that's going to be on October 24 in this room starting at 7 p.m. We invite all members of the board and all members of the community to come here and to have an opportunity to understand what the Grozio Police Department does. We have a three-page blue flyer that I have left on the outside of the Merle Solomon room tonight. I'd like to leave this with the township board, with the township hall. Citizens can come in and see what we do. It is important to note that things that we have in there, there were 20 items of services that we offer now that we did not have 20 years ago. We are doing more with less. We encourage members of the community to come into the meeting. And again, 7 p.m., October 24, that's a Wednesday. Please come and see what we're all about. Make it an informed decision when you go to page four on that ballot. And literally the second from the last issue on that ballot has got to be one of the most important. It's community, it's safety, it's quality of life. Please come and join us. Make an informed decision when you vote.
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bletcher. Is that a question for Mr. Bletcher or for the board? No, I do. Is it a question for Mr. Bletcher? Yes. Yeah, okay. I'll, Are you taking questions? Absolutely. <laughs> Jerry Hatley, 24128 Lions. Um, taxes, meals, my intent was for the safety of the children. I'd like to know if you know where the Wayne County Sheriff's are. I haven't seen a Wayne County Sheriff car. I lived out here for 18 years now. We're paying for Wayne County Sheriff's to patrol our highways. Maybe we could save some money by having them come out. We pay for it. And when our police department, and then, there again, I'm not talking about the million just for or against, but when our police department comes out and openly supports a candidate against the, the majority of the voters in this community and then wants the community to support him for a meal. It's a tough sell. Again, Carl Bletchery, 250. Taking the last uh, point first, the Grozeal Police Officers Union was not unanimous in their decision to oppose Supervisor Loftus or to, oppose, to uh, promote um, candidates for the last initiative. In my personal opinion, it was a decision that was not in the best interests of the community or in the best interests of uh, certainly those that were um, running for the township board one way or the other. I do, however, believe very strongly that this issue, this ballot issue, is not about personalities, it's not about people, it's about quality of life. The township has been supporting the police department with $300,000 a year out of the rainy day fund for the last three years. The police union took a six year contract that includes 0% raise for year one, 0% raise for year two, 2% raise for year four, five, and six. Our chief of police, our deputy chief, and our lieutenant all took a 10% salary reduction when they came on board three years ago. Our people have sacrificed our animal control officer. I retired was replaced with an animal control officer that is earning one half of her pay. We are taking money from forfeiture funds that we've not been able to use previously to pay for township services. I can appreciate the idea that perhaps Wayne County costs all of us money, but I ask each and every one here tonight and everybody in the community, if you don't like something that the police officers union did, don't take it out on the community. I'm a taxpayer. I have a mother-in-law, I have a spouse, I have children, I have neighbors, and I have friends that live in this island. When I look at this matter as being a money issue, it is an economic issue, yes, but it is a quality of life issue, most importantly. I have spoken to four different community organizations in the last two weeks. I take questions, I take comments. The questions are, why do we need to have the additional funding? It's in the brochure that was mailed out. These are the services that we offer. The comments that I get, though, are thank God for the Grozeal Police and for the Fire Department. 95% of the rescue calls that we have on this island, police officer is there first. You may recall seeing uh, Danny McLaughlin in the Grozeal camera receiving his third life-saving award. That article highlighted the fact that if Danny McLaughlin had not been there as quickly as he did, it was a matter of seconds between life and death. There's another community that's very close to us that an officer came and works for Grozeal now, and he is marveling at the amount of training our people have. Where he came from as a 15-year employee, he looked at me at one meeting and said, Carl, I can't believe it took me 14 years to get advanced first aid and CPR from where I was. 
the people in that community have a police department that's a very good professional police department. They will clear the path, they will identify the problems, and they will assist the first responders with medical issues, identifying where the person or people are. But they don't administer first aid, they don't begin first aid. We do. If you don't like something that our officers did individually, that is their First Amendment right to do as they please. You may not like it, but at the end of the day, this is not about a political issue with them. It's not about differences you have with them. This is about our families. It's about our children. This is about our community. Think very carefully when you vote. Read the brochure, read the flyer, understand what we do. And I know Chief Porcerelli has something he wants to say. Chief? I just wanted to answer uh, Mr. Hatley's question on the Wayne County Sheriff's. I met with uh, one of the deputy chiefs actually for breakfast. This was a few months back. And the gentleman was telling me that uh, uh, Gross Hill has as good a relationship with Wayne County Sheriff's as any city. We've opened up our jails, our cells, uh, to the uh, Marine Division. We assist them in transportation. But uh, their patrol division will not be around Gross Hill. They're too busy. They have so many cuts. They have some areas that they have to cover themselves by contract. Um, that other uh, areas pay for that. But um, as for his question there, that you won't see, you may see him out here when we call for assistance, but you won't see him out here on regular patrol. Yeah, thanks, Chief. Thank you, uh, Mr. Fletcher. All right, moving on, Mr. Burkhart. <clears throat> Tom Burkhart, I have a wire drive. When I started, I came with uh, two things I wanted to talk about. Now I have five. <laughs> so I'll do it quickly. Uh, number one is I want to follow up on the police uh, police chief. I agree. I hope our fellow residents approve the millage. Too often what I hear from people is we live on an island, and because we live on an island, we have two bridges. It's a safe place. I don't believe that. I believe it's a safe place because we have a police department that knows how to patrol an island. And if we didn't have that kind of knowledge and that professionalism, this would be an easy place to come up on a boat, steal what you want and leave on a boat, come up and commit a crime. It's not that we have an island that makes it easy to police. We have an island that the police make it easy and safe. So please approve the millage. The second thing I have is that uh, we were talking about, Chief was talking about Chicory and Grove Hill Parkway. I take that most of the time. And we have a problem with that light. I've sat there many, many times. You come up from uh, West River, the light turns red for the uh, parkway, and it remains red for you to enter parkway. The light turns green again for parkway, turns red again for parkway, and the light never turns green. Did that two mornings ago. I sat there and watched seven cars make a left on a red light because they just finally gave up. So wh whoever contacts Wayne County to get that fixed, we, gotta, we have a safety issue. Uh, following up, also similar thing, talking about the children. I've wanted for years to see blinking yellow lights at Meridian. It says 25 miles an hour school in session. And as we're looking at safety for children, please include that in the, uh, in the game plan. We're just waiting for somebody to get hurt at Meridian. People drive up and out down that road 35, 45 miles an hour, whether the school's in session or not. Next item I have came from listening to uh, you folks when we were talking about the uh, park. And I heard some people say well, about previous problems we've had with drainage after we've completed projects. And I want to suggest to you that we need to look at our township engineering professionals. Because I also heard you say that after the township engineers looked at it and it was approved and we did the work, we had drainage problems. That tells me we have a problem with our engineers. How are they approving that without asking a question and resolving those drainage problems up front? And what I really came for was to show and question. Uh, and again, one of the things I think you folks get upset with is people putting things to you that nobody else in the township heard before. I didn't do that. Took this to Tom, or to, uh, what, 20 months ago I took it to you? Remember when I brought the dirty filter in? Okay. 
we have, in our house, we have a reverse osmosis water system, which is a fancy, expensive system. takes all the junk out of the water. First filter in the system looks like that. Okay? This is five weeks. We put that system in ten years ago. It used to be at the end of six months, which wouldn't, is what they tell you to remind, replace it. My filter looked like this, and I used to always wonder, do I really need to change it? Over the last three years, five weeks, my filter looks like this. If you really want something interesting, lift this one and lift this one. The amount of dirt in here is unbelievable, and we're drinking that. Now, I am convinced, though I may be wrong, that that's not coming from uh, Detroit, because the distance from the Detroit pumping system to us is too long, and that should settle out. Something is wrong with our water system that we're getting that level of dirt in the water system, and we're drinking it, we're cooking with it, except in my house where we clean it out. And Barry, like I said, you know, I don't want to pick on you, but I took this to you 20 months ago and said, What's going on? And you said somebody get back to me, and nobody ever got back to me. I give it to you. You have my attention, Barry. I did speak. Like. I did speak to Mr. Burkhart some time ago, and I thought I explained to him what the issues were with the water system over here. And basically, the issue over here is we have a lot of old water mains. We have water mains over here that are 80 years old of a life expectancy that's probably 30 or 40. So they're getting very old. They have a lot of sediment in the pipes. There's nothing wrong with the drinking water quality. The quality is still there. But I agree with Mr. Burkhardt. He's got a, a filter system in his house, and that's a good thing. And if people choose to do that, they can, and a lot of them have. But we have a system over here like I said, that's very old, where the commission has been working on taking steps to to replace the old stuff with new. Um, a lot of it is a money issue, and to be honest, we haven't done any replacement over here in probably five or six years. Twice a year, we flush the system. We, this in fact, we're doing it right now. This time of the year, in the fall of the year, we go around and flush our water main system, and we get a lot of the rusty sediment out of this out of the mains. But when you flush a system that's 80 years old, you can't get it all. There's still sediment in those pipes, and that is what's ending up in people's water filters and in in the water. Um, the, our water quality here is still good. We don't have any water that's bad to consume. Uh, there's tests taken over here on a monthly basis, and they're tested by the Detroit Water System to make sure that they're safe to drink. But I, I, there's not much I can say other than the fact that we have a system over here, an infrastructure water system that's in badly need of replacement. Thank you, Mr. Sandlock. Any questions? I, I'm just going to make a comment. Sure. You made the statement it's partially due to funding. It's entirely due to funding. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. Okay, um, thank you, Mr. Sandlock. We obviously have maybe a distinction between uh, particulates and bio problems, and I don't think we have bio problems, but particulates, which your filter. The question I have, do I need to come back next month, or can I? Back up. Come on, while, while the topic's hot. The, the, I, I heard Barry what Barry explained. However, I can take this and I can put a magnet on it, and you get no metal. This is silt, just plain old dirt. And as you guys know, I happen to be an engineer, so I know what I'm doing too. And there's there's no appreciable metal in here, Barry. No, I, I didn't say the rust. No, you said it's rust. Which gives you iron it's oxide. In the pipe, and in some of the pipes, there are rust. There's, I can show you. I mean, but it is sediment in the pipes. There are no metals in the pipes. Metal would be a contaminant, and that's not allowed. But you're getting sediment, what I refer to as sediment, in those pipes. It settles out in old pipes. We have 8-inch diameter pipes on this island that probably only have an inside uh, diameter of 5 inches because the buildup on the inside of that old pipe has gotten to the point where it's restricting the flow. And 
flows another issue. I could talk about it all night. Won't go into it right now. But I can't stress enough that this community look at replacing and updating your water infrastructure. It's it's paramount, in my opinion. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Again, Mr. Sedlak, uh, Mr. Lemoyne. Good evening. Uh, thank you for a good discussion tonight, Steve Leboyne, 8410 Hampton. Uh, some of the themes I'm picking up. Just want to make a 30-second comment here. You know, I think it's good to have the township lawyer present because clearly, if there would have been a death and there's been discussion to the township offices, and I look to this direction and, and to you, Supervisor, uh, with no response for the you know the safety of the kids. You know, I think when you look at how do we mitigate risk and how do we be more responsive, because it's pretty evident uh, the calls were made. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lemoyne. Other comments? Mr. Prozac. Yes. I'm Lonnie Prozac, and I am for sure living at 21833 Newton Drive. I have an address with numbers in front of it. A uh, couple things. Number one, uh, good job, Gross Hill Police Department, good job, Gross Hill Fire Department, on your open houses. I've heard nothing but nice things about them. And uh, I just want to remind people that there's a guy that has open house here every day on the island, and his name is Rooney. And uh, he doesn't get mentioned often enough, so three cheers for Tim Rooney for what he does. And you can give me the five bucks later. <laughs> State law regarding hunting on Grozeal. I just looked it up. A guy can't remember his address, but he can run this. Uh, it says that Grozeal Township is closed to all hunting. State law. Which means that you can hunt in a boat off the shore, but you can't hunt on the land. And that's an MDEQ reg regulation. Uh, federal government has the right to tell you what you can do or not do, but the state has the right to do more, not less, more. So it's more restrictive for the state to say no hunting in Grozeal, and that's a state regulation. I can pull it up for you. My, my toys have gone dead tonight, but uh, I just thought you'd like to know that. And have a good night. It's good to see your smiling faces. Thank you, Mr. Posiask. Other questions? Mr. Clark. Uh, Woody Clark, Park, Park Lane. Legal fees? Yeah. Okay. Legal fees on the warrant list dated 10-4-2012 um, to um, O'Reilly, Rancy and Lowe, which is Tom, uh, a source firm, in the amount of $8,926. What's that for? Um, general attorney, just attorney fees for all the questions or the staff yet. All the what? Questions that stay. I've had nothing in particular. It's, there's a couple of different issues. Uh, a lot of them were um, MTTs for border review and the just general legal counsel. The MTT is tax tribunal. Okay, but I, he's our attorney. Is it? We have other attorneys for other things? No. No. Is, is he on, on it? Was his name mentioned just now? In yeah, part of our. our or rather ran silly. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Just want to make sure. Um, a resident asked, uh, they sent me a note. Resident Apple, you see if we could have a 24 hour hotline for calling in complaints and not leaving their name. I don't know. Tony does a pretty good job, but you got to leave the name with Tony. I haven't seen any other way. Is there? I get messages all the time. Uh, I get letters. Yeah. And uh, you pass them on to Tony. Yes. Okay. Every time. And he, and okay. Every time. And most of those have names on the letter. Well, you, you said uh, I get some with and some that no are doubt. anonymous, and I, I move them all along. Okay. Whatever we get on a twenty-four hour hotline, what would that do? It'd be the same as leaving a message on my uh, voicemail or calling me directly. So you think it's I mean, a good the, idea, a bad the idea? Is, the capability is already there. Okay. Fire department blinking sign on Sunday on Mer Meridian. I'd like to know how much it costs because maybe some of the other 
people in our organization and Girl Zeal might want to use it the same thing. So it would be nice to know how much it costs to uh, put up there so they can blink it. Let uh, Chief Moran, I can back with you. Okay, can you tell us now? I, I'm not going to. If you can, Chief, fine. If uh, if not, it's kind of blindsiding again. No, I'm not blindsiding. I'm just, uh, it's thirty-five hundred dollars an intersection, and the county has to hang the sign to a tune of fifteen hundred bucks, which is part of that thirty-five. Is that for that mobile? Blinking it's the sign? blinking fire truck. Those are no, 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 not those. The the mobile sign that had open sign? house open from. Uh, oh, oh, oh! That's what do you what do you want to know about it? How much did it cost? Uh, I think it's about 650 bucks for a week, for the week. Some of the other organizations on the island would like to use that, probably. I mean, they want to know how much it's going Okay, we're going to want to check our sign ordinances before people are going to be willy-nilly pulling that around and putting it in their front yard. No, no, I'm not talking about oops. Well, tell you Should I say yard. oops? <laughs> I'm talking about four no. corners. No, no, that's a rented sign. So, okay. Yeah. I'm talking four corners. Yeah. We can't put up a permanent sign, but we can put up a part-time sign. But Woody, he rents that sign. He doesn't own it. I understand that. We could do the same thing. Or, you know, open space could do it or do 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 Okay. Uh, is there another meeting before the vote? Yes. 22nd. Huh? 22nd? 22nd. Oh, the 22nd. I think it's the 20 seconds. Um, fluoride. Was fluoride discussed at that meeting you went to, Ted? But next time you go, would you ask them if they can eliminate it? They didn't talk anything about water substance, just operational costs. That is hey. operational cost. <clears throat> well, by that I mean they, we, we, buy we were basic, she was basically discussing the water bills. And okay. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Mr. Clark. Other questions, comments from uh, public present? Going, going. All right, with that offered, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, so I'll give it to uh, Mr. Uh, Van Oss and seconded by Mr. Rankin. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned at 9.56. Good night, all. Thanks for coming. <laughs>